Hey, all you automotive enthusiasts, I've got three EV trends that you're going to... What is wrong with me? Why can't I speak? I don't know. All right. Three EV trends for you automotive enthusiasts in 2024. We're going to talk about the merging battery technology. How are they extending the range between charges? And which states are most aggressively pursuing laws and offering incentives to spur EV sales in America. So quick recap, electric vehicle sales are expected to hit a record 9% of all passenger vehicles. Still not a big number. Okay, that's according to Atlas Public Policy. Now that's up from about 7.3%. Uh, that puts us around 1.3, 1.4 million cars that will be sold this year. Let's get into those advancements in battery technology. What we're talking about is the battery chemistry, right? These researchers, these engineers, they are constantly exploring new battery chemistries to enhance the performance. And right now, lithium ion batteries are the most commonly used, most common type of battery used in electric vehicles. Let's look at the five emerging battery technologies that are trying to compete against the dominance of that battery right now. So the first one is solid state batteries. One of the advantages to a solid state battery is that they potentially have higher energy density, longer lifespans, which is good, but the challenge is the manufacturing complexity and the cost scalability are, are out of this world right now. So the, right now that is not uh, a viable option. Lithium sulfur batteries. In theory, higher energy density, uh, potential for lighter battery packs. Obviously, the lighter the car, uh, the more energy efficient it will be. But the challenge is sulfur tends to degrade over the charge and di discharge. So that cycle that it goes through tends to degrade the energy density. So uh, there's some challenges in keeping that performance very consistent, which we have come to love with lithium ion. Okay, the third competing technology is called graphene-based batteries, right? Now, that's another potential for very high energy density and faster charging because that's always been kind of a knock. You have to kind of wait a long time for lithium ion. But the challenge is the cost of production and the ability to scale is low. So that's really holding it back from integrating it into the, the already established commercial battery systems. Number four, lithium air batteries. The advantage is high theoretical energy density. The more dense, the better, more efficiency. The challenge is it's not very stable, not very efficient, and it hasn't been proven practical to implement, but they are continuing, these researchers, to work on lithium air batteries. And the fifth and final one is what's known as a flow battery. Now, these flow batteries, they are scalable. That is a good advantage. Uh, definitely potential for longer lifespan because that's been one of the knocks on lithium ion is that you only get so many miles, then you have to replace them, uh, of course, with proper maintenance. But the challenge is the density of energy is lower compared to some of the lithium ion batteries. So that let's look at what they're doing to improve the range between charges. Here are the six ways that car companies and cities are working to change the charging infrastructure. First one is the charging infrastructure. There's two things they want to do within that infrastructure. They want to make them faster and more high power. The other thing they're working on to increase the range in between the time you have to charge is vehicle efficiency. Now that one makes sense. That one seems really practical too. So you're, they're looking at things like aerodynamics, right? weight reduction. If they can do that, vehicles lighter, flows better, better uh, distance between charges. The next is regenerative braking systems. I think this one is probably the most interesting of all of them. When you break the energy that is created, those calipers, they are driven back into the batteries, which is increasing that overall energy efficiency. There are prototypes out there now. Next up, we have Energy recapture technologies, fancy way of saying solar integration, 
right? Some of the cars you see have solar panels in ways that they can add more power back into the batteries. And then the next idea kind of competing with solar integration is energy harvesting. Can the car capture and convert all that ambient energy, like the vibrations or the heat into electrical energy to supplement the vehicle's power? The final one, and this one, I kind of like this one too. This is battery swapping at a rapid charging station. So you just swap out a battery, fully charged, ready to go, and you're on your way. Let's take a look at the eight states that have been actively implementing very aggressive policies and laws to support the adoption of electric vehicles. Now, as you know, California, they have been the leader in promoting EV adoption with a range of policies. What they're pushing right now is that zero emission vehicle. That is causing a lot of stress for the manufacturers. And I know there are some lawsuits about that, but they are they are on the forefront of pushing for ZEV, and that's a mandate. And they're also offering incentives and rebates, okay, to the consumer. Now, next in line is New York. They have initiatives that are like financial. Um, they're investing in charging infrastructure development, and they're putting in some regulatory measures really to encourage those consumers to st and businesses to adopt electric vehicles. Frankly, I think uh, more businesses would adopt electric vehicles. It's just that the cities are having a hard time creating enough power. There's been a lot of discussion about just how much electricity is required to charge fleets. So we're definitely ahead of the curve. There needs to be more development around that. Now, following in the footsteps of New York, we have Oregon, Colorado, New Jersey, Maryland, and Washington. And then finally, we have Massachusetts. Now, they have a range of uh, offerings that include rebates and grants for charging infrastructure, and they're also pushing regulatory support for ZEVs. So make a comment down below. Let me know if you plan on buying for your next car an EV, and if so, what are you going to get? And if not, why not? Oh, and thanks for watching.